back. This is stream 24 in this uh, series where I'm programming an NES game from scratch uh, live on Twitch. And uh, I just want to get right into it. I'm thinking this is going to be a pretty short episode uh, or stream just because it's been a busy week for me and uh, I really just want to accomplish getting the MMC3 stuff working tonight. Um, I want to make sure that we can get the cycle counting happening properly and then once we get that happening we can um, talk about what will be next and then uh, start getting back into the map loading again and dealing with MMC3 as our mapper compared to what we were doing before. So if you remember last time we had made some changes because our code was being hampered by the fact that we were waiting for sprite zero in order to uh, change the scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Excuse me. And, um, and so even though we got it to achieve the effect we wanted where the screen was split, the correct way. Um, the problem was that it was slowing the game down way too much. So we got we got MMC3 working uh, for the mapper um, <clears throat> and you can see that the game works essentially the same way as it did before. There's no issues with slowdown. Um, but the problem is that right now yes, thanks for interrupting Carbonite. Um, right now we have the problem of the interrupts not firing so based on at least the initial reading of it it seemed like it was pretty straightforward to make the um, make the interrupt fire but it seems like that's not actually happening so let's uh, see where we are here so Did I remove all that code? Oops, I don't know what I pressed there. E00, okay, so in the interrupt handler, so the important thing we do need to do is in the interrupt handler, we do, do need to um, turn off and or acknowledge any interrupts from MMC3 by setting E1000 um, <clears throat> because uh, we don't want any additional interrupts happening here. Uh, from what I'm reading, we don't have to re-enable the interrupts here. Um, it's better that we do that in the game loop. Um, so what I want to do is uh, wait for, uh, yeah, wait for drawing to complete. So in this code here, what I want to do is I want to start the reload I want to set the I want to I want to set the counter value I want to re uh, reload the counter with the next or set the counter so that we can trigger the IRQ and then enable the IRQ so just for now what we should do is um, let's load a value I don't know what we want to do maybe a hundred store it in the latch which is C thousand and then we want to uh, uh, I guess we want to reload and then we want to enable the IRQ. So in theory, uh, what? Load A. Oh, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, it's not decimal, it's hex. Uh, I don't know, we'll just make it 50 hex. So we'll know if it's working based on if our Lua script here shows the IRQ and it still looks like it's not because the IRQ um, is supposed to be writing to FD so 
7 FD, and then if it does write to 7 FD, if it writes a 2 and then a 1, just like our other things, it will output how many cycles the RQ is taking um, or the interrupt handler is taking, but it seems still not to be working. Um, so. Let's read this a little bit more carefully. I feel like I'm just ever so slightly doing the wrong thing. Um, so this register specifies the IRQ counter reload value. When the IRQ counter is zero, this value will be copied to the IRQ counter at the next rising edge of the PPU address, presumably at PPU 260 of the current scan line. Okay, <clears throat> this will tell it to reload on the next rising edge of the PPU address. That's fine. Writing any value to this register will disable. Writing any register, any value to this register will enable. So. I mean, we should be seeing this pretty much right away if I'm do if I were doing it right because <clears throat> the interrupt handler is. Let me let me let me check this uh, just to make sure that I'm not totally messing this up. So if we go to the hex editor and we go to the very end of memory. We see three addresses, and E671 is the address of our interrupt handler. And we go to the debugger, and we go to E671. Yeah, so that, that, that is our handler code. So that's, at least that part is correct. And we could even set a breakpoint that if it executes that code, it should break, but um, obviously it's not doing that. Wonder if it is ever doing that. No, it's never doing that. Okay, so uh, I know I read that it has to have you have to be drawing at least sprites or backgrounds or both. All right, so this is mirroring. This is the program RAM protection. This is the latch. This is the reload register. This is the disable. This is the enable. Is clock the counter value is checked. If zero or reload flag is true, it is reloaded with the IRQ latch value at C thousand. Otherwise, it decrements. If the IRQ counter is zero and IRQs are enabled, E zero zero one, which we are setting. Uh, wait for draw to complete. All right, we are setting that. An IRQ is triggered. The alternative revision checks the IRQ counter transition one to zero, whether from decrementing or reloading. When using eight by eight sprites, if the background uses zero, the sprites use one thousand. The IRQ counter should decrement on PPU cycle two sixty right after. Okay, when using eight by eight, if this is this, then okay. When using eight by sixteen, we're not. Scan line counter cannot be stopped. So there is no direct immediate uh, access to the counter. Writing E1000 will only prevent the MMC3 from generating the IRQs. The counter will continue to run. Writing E1001 will simply allow the MMC3 
three to generate IR queues, the counter the counter remains unaffected. Writing to C thousand one will continue will cause the counter to be cleared. Let's set the reload flag to true. It will be reloaded on the next rising edge. It doesn't immediately affect the counter. Yeah. The counter will not properly work unless different pattern tables for background and sprite data are in use. Standard configuration. Uh, and we are, because we if we go to our pattern tables, we can see that we have the two different ones. This is the background, this is the sprites, so that's okay. Um, the counter is clocked in each rising edge of no matter what caused it, so it's possible to intentionally or not clock the counter by writing to 2006. regardless of whether PPU is not rendering. Hmm. Now, I was reading, I was, I was researching this and I'm trying to make sure that I'm trying, I'm trying not to cheat too much and, and program anything outside of the stream so that it, it's, uh, excuse me, so that we're, um, you know, doing this sort of all together. Um, I had found some code that claimed to work. <clears throat> so... I am a little confused because I thought I was doing what they were suggesting. So in the NMI, oh, so they're saying in the NMI to, wait a minute, really? Let me, uh, let me bring this up here. <clears throat> Uh, so I was looking at this to see, let's see, RQ routine. Do this in your NMI. Write E1000 to acknowledge currently pending. It. Oh, so do this in the, interesting, okay. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. So in the vblank code. I only want to do this when we're actually processing the game state. So acknowledge any pending interrupts. Uh, write the number of scan lines to C1000 and then to C1001 and then write to E1001 to enable IRQ. Um, okay, so that's really the only change was that I had to move it to the NMI and then acknowledge any pending interrupts before resetting the counter. Oh, it, it ran. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's cool. That's, uh, that's what I wanted it to do. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> Is it no longer running? No, it's still running. Okay, cool. So, Right, that's the, oh no, that's not the, uh, that's not the uh, interrupt. Where is the interrupt? The interrupt is here. Run. Okay, the interrupt isn't happening. Well, that's good. I feel a little bit better about that, about that, because it seemed like that was too easy to make it work. Um. Mapper 4, special effects, straight through, blah, 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 blah. There are four registers. C1000 is the IRQ counter. C1001, yeah, I did all of that. So set up the IRQ, do this in your V, okay, write to E1000 to acknowledge. That's what we're doing here, right? 
write the number of scan lines you want to wait to C1000 and then to C1001. We did that. Oh, write to E1000 again to latch the countdown value. And then, huh. Okay. It still doesn't seem to be working. E675. So this is the. Uh, If we open this in Taco, I know it definitely showed that it was using MMC3. <clears throat> so it's perplexing that it is not that it is not triggering the interrupts properly. Um Hmm. A few things you have to do set up before you can use IRQs in a game. First of all, set the IRQ vector. Did that. The IRQ vector is that, yeah. When IRQ is generated, the CPU jumps to the 16-bit address. CPU registers are set, yeah. Second thing you have to do is use them to stop other things on the NES from generating IRQs of their own. The NES has a frame counter. Finally, to be able to use IRQs, you have to tell NES CPU to actually acknowledge them instead of ignoring them as it normally does. Oh! To enable IRQs, you have to clear the interrupt disable flag in the CPU. So I was doing SEI, but I'm not doing the clear of the interrupts. Okay. Yeah. That would that would certainly do it. So that's an important point. I didn't even really think about this. This this is turning off interrupts on the CPU, telling it ignore any interrupt that's occurring and we don't want to have that happen so all right uh debugger okay cool it is no now this freaking breakpoint got messed up again uh let me add 07 fd no fd right okay run all right, so it is actually doing it. So it is writing to that location. So the interrupt is occurring now, now that we turn them on. So why is the Lewis script not showing? Anything? My modifying the right thingy. Yeah. Okay. So that that is the Lua. Okay. Uh, address equals 07 FD, and that's what I'm actually writing to in the assembly, right? Um, <clears throat> here to acknowledge the interrupt we're loading a with two we're storing it into 7fd and then we're loading a with one and storing it to 07fd which should be and the reason I care about this is I want to be able to time how long the interrupt is taking because we don't want it to take too long that'll cause a problem so 07fd Oh, yeah, you have to be watching that in the emulator. And there we go. Okay, awesome. So now we have our six cycles that we're counting. Um, we can even be really annoying about this and make sure. 
make sure they all line up. Uh, NMI colon space GL space space IRQ colon space. Okay. Um, cool. So now we're calculating the number of frames, and then the only thing that should be left to do at this point is now we can change the scroll like we wanted to. And who knows what this is going to actually end up doing? It should be okay. Cool. Nice. All right. So. Now we have to mess with that counter value that we're loading in, but that is awesome. So, um, I wanted it to be one metatile high, so 224 and hex is E0. So, Oh, uh, in the top 240. Interesting, I wonder why. Well, one thing to note is that you can see that now using MMC3, although we are getting some weird glitching with the bottom we're not getting the kind of slowdown that we were seeing before where it was so slow we were we were having uh, problems with the game being unplayable because of how slow it was um, it looks like we're not it looks like we only have one tiles worth because with that counter value, is it 240 minus 32? Did I miscalculate? Miscalculate? That's the wrong value, or that was the wrong value, maybe. So it's a little bit. Is it off by just one tile still? C8. Nice. So now the only thing I'm wondering about is how we can fix that uh, little graphical glitch line at the bottom, but that's one meta tile worth of bar at the bottom without using um, sprite zero hit. So we actually don't need this anymore. And we don't need to do that anymore. And this can be set to zero so we can use all of the sprites again. Um, let's go back to and taco for a second. So I want to look at the um, the OEM data. Uh, so it's not populating that sprite. That wasn't too bad. Once I once I picked up on that last bit, because that would be why that would be why it would be failing in um, in no matter what I was doing when I was setting it, because it was uh, the interrupts weren't enabled. So, all right, uh, let's now make it so that we actually have. A black bar at the bottom instead of the map that we've loaded. So, load level. Right now, load level is loading everything, and then when it hits, yeah. So, what I want to do is I want to want I want 
to load one one row less of meta tiles. Now, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, so it's eight. And we'll get to Y in a second. So this is 3C, which is 60. So it's 3, 4. No, I want to leave that alone. Because what I want to check is if we got to the point where we're ready to. So let's see. E is 30. Branch is not equal to right. So we're not quite at the. This is where we're loading the attributes. Should probably comment this a little bit better because I don't remember exactly why this works the way that it does, but it's not super confusing. Okay, so this is where we're done and we're going to the next screen that we're loading in the memory in the name table. Um, all right, so I want to change this, this 3C here, like I said, right, because we were doing, let me think about that, it was 8. Screen is eight by well, that wouldn't be sixty. This is 32, shouldn't that be 30? Oh no, it would be 60 because it's two, two full screens. Um, branch of not equal to check screen attributes, compare, right, 1E. Okay, so that's right. So what it's doing is, um, let me comment this because I don't, I didn't remember exactly. Uh, check to see if we're done with all the screen tiles we need to load. So um, two screens of height, 60 tiles, uh, 30, 30 tiles, 30. And then um, what we want to do is we want to check check to see here if we're done with one screen and need to load the attributes, right? Because one E is 30. So what I want to do is I want to change this because I don't want to load the map into the region that would be for the last set of meta tiles here, right? So that in that would be uh, four. So minus four gives us one A. And then what I need to do branch not equal to load tiles, and so we're here. So what I want to do here is I actually want to skip over these tiles by loading the address that I need to go to for the attributes, which, let's see, so if we're starting at 
we're starting at 2,000 hex in the name table, right? 2004, 2000. If we're starting at 2000, um, <clears throat> then let's do the math. So, um, we have, we're going to write, uh, thir instead of 30 rows, we're going to write 26 rows. So, um, what would the address be? to jump, well, that's, that's actually not even the right question. It's, so it's for, let me think about, it. so the, for the number of tiles we need to write to get to the attribute table, it's 32 by 30, so it's the 960, or wait, that's not actually, Right, that's the 960. So we want to skip to that part. So 23C0 is what we want to go to. Um, so C0 and then 23. I always forget the order. I think it's. No, so 23. C0. So we want to skip the tiles we don't want to write and go right to the attributes. I think that's right. We'll find out in a second that we need to load 2002 to clear out. All right, so let's see how crazily this got broken by this change. <clears throat> Okay, so some of the attributes, uh, actually, that is surprisingly close to what I wanted to do. Because, let's see, it's exactly one meta tile row skipped. It's just the attributes here are wrong. Um, oh, because the second time around, <laughs> okay, because the second time around, it's writing the attributes back again to the screen. Okay, that's not that bad. Um, the only other thing I think that we need to do... So the problem right now is that it's using... I bet if we go slow... Uh, maybe not. I, I was thinking maybe that if we went slow, we might see this change potentially but maybe not i uh, i'm thinking that what's happening potentially is that the no that's not hmm well i mean that's not a bad thing i was i thought that as we're traversing the name table and the um, the offset bit is getting changed that maybe this would get messed up, but it doesn't appear to be. I wonder what row that is now. Like if I... So that's, well, part of that is, <clears throat> so what you have to do, so there's a, um, there's a way you have to do the rights to this to make this work. So let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the reference here because it had the information. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Arbor reference, PPU. Scrolling. Okay. 
also, let's see, so when you are doing this kind of scrolling, So there's this whole formula of what you're supposed to do to make this work. So, okay, so the name table number shifted by two. So, that should be just zero. The Y value and the X value and then the load byte of the name table address. Low byte of the name table address, which should be the Y ended by F8. Shifted by two or X. So this is gonna be zero for us and that's going to be zero also. So all of those should be zero. Name table. I mean, we could make this one and then I'm just curious to see what the effect of that is. So there's no. Name table. Oh, yeah, because it's got to be um, times four. So that was just me not putting the right value in. Uh, oh. So Okay, I didn't expect that to do anything, but this should now switch to the lower name table, which it does not appear to be doing. It should be, oh, but then, no. The thing is, I don't actually even care about it being split in the X and the Y. I just want to do a If you only write 2006 twice, you can update course X, course Y, N, and the bottom two bits of the fine Y. The top bit of the fine Y is cleared and the fine X is unchanged, which that would work for us here. What is, what is N exactly? <coughs> Is it the name table? Can I make it do a capital? Um, oh yeah, the name table select. Split both X and Y scroll on the scan liners before form writes 2006 and 2005 alternately in order to completely reload V. Without the second write to 2006, only the horizontal portion of V will be reloaded from T at the end of the scan line. By writing twice to 2006, the second write causes an immediate reload. So the name table, the X and the Y our X and Y are zero. So this saying we could do two rights to 2005. 
this is going to be zero, that's going to be zero, and then that's going to be zero, and then so it, it's just a matter of writing in the right order. 2005, 2005, So this is saying, it's weird because this is saying that to do it, you should do 2006, 2005, 2005, and then 2006. But then this is saying 5566. Five, six. I mean, they both seem to have an, the same effect essentially which is not exactly what I want. Um, I mean, this is the name table I want. I want name, right? Name table zero. If I were to do That, that is it. So that is, is it just, oh, it's possible. Am I just not writing? Am I not changing the right? I guess that that is possible that I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking at the right tiles. Yeah. Cause you know what? Those tiles are not going to be visible anyway so there are more tiles than actually right is that right it's going to be 32 by 30 with 240 well you know let's let's do this to verify <clears throat> Let's do this to verify that I'm actually looking at the table that I think that I'm looking at. So if I do load level here and I change this to be even smaller, um, so it was, I said it was 26, let's make it 22, so that's 16 in hex. So going to have an even bigger gap in the um, tiles. So that's still not... Is it doing... Oh, I wonder... Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Maybe the Y value that it's talking about is literally the Y value that you want to draw and not the Y value of the scroll register you expect it to be. So if that's the case, then what I want to do is I want to change, I want to change the Y value to be um, 24 times eight, right? 24 times Eight is one ninety two, so C zero. So the name table is right. C zero. So I want to load a C zero, and then load X zero, and then the low byte of the name table address is zero. Um, I mean that would make sense that that's what it's actually doing, but. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's um, all right. So I just I did my math wrong, but uh, so three twenty six times eight d zero. Still needs to go down even further. It's still not doing it. What's wrong? F zero. That was a good game. That was a good game on the Super NES. Um. I'm just trying to see what is up because it's not it's sort of changing it now to what I wanted it to be so let's take a look at this for a second the difference between C0 So that looks the same. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because it's not just the Y, is it? It's. Well, it is the Y. So why. Uh huh. Oh, because this is different. So this should be. Because we actually care what this is now. So um, C0. C0 and F8. It's still C0 and the X is 0, so C0. <clears throat> Forgot be that the Y affects the bottom. Okay. Alright, so you know what? Probably. If I change if I if I change this, I I'm imagining I'm gonna see that it will also change the bottom. It did. Interesting. That's not how I expected it to change though. Oh wait. Am I just being No. Because it's going into the other name table now. Did that? Hmm. Interesting. Name table number to 2006, which the name table shouldn't have changed. The Y to 2005, so the Y location. Again, I'm assuming that the Y is actually the pixel location, not the scroll location. Yeah, oh yeah, it even says that, okay, in pixels. So if only, oh, so actually that's even better because I now read this part, which says we can do this more simply. We can let's see, so we can do a right to 2000, which is going to change the make sure we've got the right name table and then x and then y and then that's all we need 
because we don't care about, or wait, is it x and y or y and x? It's x and then y, so this should be zero, and then this should be maybe c zero, and then if we uh, reload that. Boo. Um, Oh, no, I'm just ugh, I'm being an idiot and misunderstanding this. But, um, of course, the X is in Y are in pixels. But, all right, so let me think about this for a second instead of just changing things randomly. So if the screen is 30 tiles high, Right, that means it's um, minus 30 tiles times 8 gives us, I'm in hex mode, 30 tiles times 8 gives us our 240, and our meta tiles are um, 16, right? Because it's 32 divided by 16. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, two, it's 32 tiles, so 256 by 16 gives us 16. So are they, is there 32 by 32? I don't even know. I don't even know what size I made my own meta tiles. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. So um, 30 times 8 minus 32 gives you 208, which is D0. So we don't need this to be D0, we need to be D0. Um, so that should be the value that it is. <clears throat> that should not be starting to 2000. So it's like it's, it's, it's like it's got the X value wrong. See, that's saying that you get that name table, do Y, and you do X. wonder why I'm not understanding why it's um, two different things in two different spots. If we were to do it this way, this is well, so that's why um, D zero and zero so d zero and c zero yeah that gives you c zero and then shifted six value is three. Oh, did I miss? Oh, I missed it here. Okay, wait a minute. So this, if I do it this way, this should be the Y that I want, which is D zero. 
and f8, which is still d0, then left shifted 2, which is 340 in hex, which means it would just be 40 because it's too many bytes. It's too many bytes. So we get 40 here because x is nothing. We don't care about x. So um, and then I had switched this around, but that's There we go. All right, cool. So now the only real problem, the only real problem with this is while this is actually working, <laughs> now the problem is that because we're scrolling that way, we're actually scrolling over the empty spot So, now the question is, was this all for nothing? I mean, it's not all for nothing. I learned how this is working, but well, Maybe not. So what we could do, <clears throat> although I don't know that we'll have enough time to do that. What we could do is we could rewrite those, uh, rewrite those tiles with the status bar. See, I don't know if we're going to have enough cycles to do a full update of a meta tile row on interrupt. Because what I was going to say is that we could, you know, draw. <clears throat> we could draw the background scrolled properly and then update the uninterrupt update that row with the data and then scroll to it seems like a pretty tall order for it to do that <clears throat> So this should go back to being one uh, E. Switch back to <coughs> FCE UX because I want the script stuff to be running. So that actually loaded. So now the question is, I'm pretty sure that I could write, because it's, let's see. Ship is what, 16 by 16, because it's four sprites. So this is a full meta tile. So it needs to write four rows in the interrupt. Question is, can it do that? And then 
it's got to set the scroll. So what it's okay. So I'll load a what address is that? The weirder thing is going to be then we have to put it all back when we're done. So, actually, although that was easier, hmm, I was going to say, although this is better with the scripting stuff, the, um, and taco is better for looking at the name table viewer a little bit. Um, all right, so that's 2800. Wait, that, that address is always 2800, is it not? Yeah. So I'm just switching the mirroring just because it's going to be easier to find the location that I got to start at. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, and like right over there. So 2320, potentially. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just clobbering that one tile and then we'll see if I got that right or not. Um, all right, so we have to load the load 2002 and then store the address we want to write to and then the tile value. So load A with 2002, load A, um, 20, I think it was, 20, what did I say, 2320? Yeah, 2320, so load A, store A, 2006, load A, <clears throat> 20, store A, 2006, store, uh, so load A, 0, store A, 2007, which will, in theory, clobber that tile for us. Okay, so it did clobber a tile, but it's one row too high. So what did it, it's 2340. I mean, I'll take it that wasn't too far off. Um, all right, cool. So then, I mean, obviously we, we, we want to load a real status bar here, but um, call it status bar and then uh, load X. So it's four tiles by 32, uh, was it 64, 128? <clears throat> so that's eight zero eight zero. Uh transfer A to X, push A, uh, pull A, transfer A to X. This should be transfer X to A. Since we're messing with X, we need to uh Store it off here. Um, okay, so do that and then decrement and branch if not equal to status bar. Illegal addressing mode. 1056. Oh, dex. <laughs> nice. Uh, wow, okay. So, what did I do wrong? Transfer X, to, push A, transfer X to A, push A, pull A, transfer A to X, pull A. Okay, so that's all good. Load X with eight zero, which is 128 and then I don't need to keep loading A here. 
I'm going to just store it. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just literally running out of cycles. Is that what's happening? The NMI is interrupting my interrupt. Potentially, if I make this um, smaller. I didn't think that this was going to work, if I'm completely honest. Like, that seems to work. Mostly. I think the problem is that I am trying to mess with this. in a very time sensitive situation. <clears throat> oh, that didn't do anything because I didn't. more slowly. I want to see if that, even that was too fast to see what I wanted to see. I wanted to see if the Yeah, so it only seemed to have that happen when when this was finally drawn. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna have to think about this for a little bit because. can't man I can't see how you would have enough time to do this um, like this should be right, that should be eight zero. this here back to the beginning of the interrupt handler because we want this to change the background before we change the scroll but now in the NMI we need to do essentially the same thing so acknowledge so let's do this so we turn off the interrupt. Um, I'm not going to write the actual map values because that that's if this doesn't work, then trying to load the map values are going to is definitely not going to work. But basically, what we need to do here is now reload the tiles that were clobbered by the interrupt in order to achieve a smooth scroll. Um, uh, what load a this load a that store a load X. 
yeah load a1 store a1 decrement We need to be doing this. I don't know if I need to be doing that. <clears throat> That's creating a very interesting effect, but that is not the effect I am looking for. Um, well, actually, no, I take that back. That is. Huh. Those are the tiles, right? If I go to, oh yeah. So what what tile do I want? That's seven O. Let's use seven O. Okay. So interesting. Um. I mean, it's definitely not right, but it's not not working either. Um, let's see. That's, this is the interrupt counter setup. Oh, you know what? That helps because I need a to actually contain the value that I want for the counter. All right, so <laughs> very interesting. So what seems to be happening seems like the interrupt if you can see that's kind of flickering here, it's like the interrupt isn't fully able to do the draw before the NMI occurs. And the NMI is then resetting it, and so it's giving these weird visual artifacts, um, which is kind of cool, but not obviously what we were looking for. What I want is a solid black bar, and then the background to be the continual tiles without the black bar. Um, what can I, let's see, can I make this work without a flicker by reducing the number of tiles that I'm overwriting in the interrupt? When it's closer. It's funny, it's like it's off by one scan line, it looks like. Um, does that make it worse? It's just visually not really having a change to it. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to do some research on well, actually, let me think about this for a second. Did I miscalculate this? So it's the meta tile is four by four tiles, so it's 32 tiles by four tiles. Yeah, no, that's, that's eight zero. So it's 128 tiles that it needs to set starting at that location at two, three, four, zero. So I'm changing them to zero and then and then it's uh, 
changing them back. I mean, I could try something like unrolling the loop a little bit. This is an old trick that it, you know, will speed up. Um, yeah, that's a factor of. doesn't seem to have really had <clears throat> I mean if you go back for a second here when I reload this so it's at 245 right now if I reload it it's at 869 eh? 845 okay yeah so it, it was saving cycles by by enrolling that loop um, about 20 cycles uh, you know it just be kind of it, it becomes cumbersome at some point you know having all of these and then we have this range error branch of equal to Done status bar jump status bar So every time I do that it's gonna be a little bit faster. You can see we picked up five cycles there, but it's still it's too slow. So the issue is by the time, yeah, by the time we get the interrupt call, the data needs to be ready. But given the number of tiles we need to write to make that happen, it's just not not feasible I mean so we could narrow it down but it still only looks like we're barely may maybe getting one full row of tiles and that's cr still creating some bizarre visual artifacts in the game so that Nintaco is even handling it worse than uh, than um, FCE UX was I mean it looks cool but we were uh, well, you know what we can do we don't need those decrements if we want to unroll this a little bit more efficiently that was kind of um, let's see. So if I take eight zero and I divide it by 16, not eight zero is 128, right? 128 divided by 16, 128 divided by 16, not times, should just be eight. So Eight. We don't need to do the decrement every time. We just change the number of times we're the the number of loops we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm not sure which is right. So this is where emulators are kind of a pain because I'm not sure what this would actually do. Um, on a real piece of hardware. Oh, well, where would the fun be in that NES homebrew? I mean, why, why, why not make your first project as difficult as possible? Um, 
I'm certainly succeeding in making it pretty difficult. Uh, let's see, so unroll that one more time. Yeah, see, it's it's maybe making the one scan line like that. Or not one scan line, the one row. And even that, what's kind of funny is that you can see... You can see that it it was drawing as we progressively updated it, and then it got to the point where it wasn't finished. That's what that's what we're looking at here. We're actually seeing <laughs> we're seeing the the fail. That's what we're doing. We're seeing how badly this was uh, this is being done. So I think the I think the challenge with this is that it's it's because it's not only is it scrolling that's challenging, but I'm also doing vertical scrolling, which is even more challenging because the hardware really doesn't support it in the way that I want to with the status bar like that. So I gotta do some research. I mean, the cool thing is that we got the MMC3 interrupt handling, uh, interrupt handler stuff working. Um, so that's that's all pretty cool. Um, obviously, that wasn't that difficult once we knew what needed to be done. Um, you know, the other thing we could do is instead of having a status bar, we could use sprites for the information. I don't know. I'm not crazy about using the sprites for that information so um what i will what i will do is i'm going to comment this out well let's make sure this is actually looking okay now yeah so and then we should get rid of the drawing that's happening in the nmi because that's so we're at 1796 cycles for the nmi it was at like 600 before um, what would I call that? Status D status bar or status bar two? Okay. Load X, load A, branch not equals. Okay. Yeah, so we're back to that now, and then. get rid of the scroll bar here pretty easily I don't want to delete that code because I think uh, because I, I still want to try and get that to work um, yeah so you know I'm gonna have to do some more research on this and, and rather than sit here and read to you guys on stream I think we'll call it quits well this will be a rare short stream for a change instead of a uh, three-hour marathon like I end up doing sometimes um, but yeah the, so the key things here were SEI we were cl turning off interrupts and then we have to turn them back on because if we don't then the IRQ doesn't fire and then the only other really uh, and it's not even challenging. The only other sort of thing that we had to do for MMC3 to uh, fire its interrupt was set how many scan lines we wanted to count, set the counter, reset the counter, acknowledge any prior interrupts, and fire off that we want the interrupts to keep happening. Um, and then that was it. And then what we saw in in uh because of the lewis script was that the irq timing started showing up and that was just from the same code in the lua that we had for timing other stuff so here we were just acknowledging the interrupt and then uh resetting the timer on this was the scroll code that was removed um we don't need to do that anymore. 
because we're not doing the, um, we're not changing X. So I gotta, I gotta pull up some other games and look at what they're doing for the way they do their scrolling. Um, you know, the, the only shooting games, the only shoot 'em up games that I can think of on the NES that had that kind of scroll bar in the way that I wanted uh, are all horizontal scrollers, so like Gradius and uh, and all of the other ones that I was looking at. They they all have the horizontal scroll, and their their info is at the bottom. Um, and I was thinking Guardian Legend, but I'm pretty sure Guardian Legend doesn't really have a status bar. Guardian Legend. Let's see. I can't spell either. Legend NES. So like the, the parts where you're flying and shooting in your ship. No, well, that's... Okay, so that's got a status bar. So maybe I should check out what they're doing see how they make that work now it could be that they have a really that you know they have a really simple background and they're doing something to kind of make it work but I I don't know well I'll have to I'll have to look that uh, look at that and see um, I mean this is pretty this is pretty intense looking for the ship to be flying over. Um, I'm, of course, I'm also terrible at this game, so I'm making it past anything to like. Yeah, so this is this is vertical scrolling, and it's got a status bar. I gotta look at what it's doing. Um, that's kind of the nice thing about doing the NES programming, although it's daunting to uh, have to go through somebody else's assembly code. Uh, you can. It's all going to load up in the emulator. So I think that's it for now. Just because I got to do some more research. So any questions before I sign off from what was a... Uh, less eventful stream than usual. Well, if there are no questions, then uh, as usual, thank you for watching. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Clervis, and I am on the Nintendo Age Discord probably more than I should be. Um, but along with me, there are a bunch of other super knowledgeable people who have way more experience, who I generally turn to when I have questions where I just can't find the information I'm looking for. Um, you know, uh, Derek from Gradual Games and Kevin from Kahan Games and uh, a bunch of other people who are super brilliant um, homebrewers and uh, it's a good community of people so um, yeah thanks for watching see you Monday and uh, have a good weekend thanks